Hey YouTube. So I need to make some more sugar water and I told you guys I'd make a, uh, a quick video of, of how I do it. There's a thousand ways of making sugar water and it's not hard, but I have a few additives I wanted to just mention. But this is the way I do it. I do it out here on a, on a gas cooker and I have this big aluminum pot. But to make the measurement easier, I have notched on the inside of this pot where the water needs to go for one to one, for two to one, and for four to three. Four to three is just kind of a, a middle mixture. This time of year I'm making one to one or maybe even a little less than one to one. Um, so I just fill the bucket up until I get to that engraved line and then I bring it to a boil. Once I uh, get it to a boil, basically I use a recipe that uses these Walmart uh, 25 pounds of sugar. Um, that makes about a five gallon bucket worth of uh, mix, which is easy for me uh, at the size of my apiary to uh, mix up. And the great value of sugar at Walmart is the cheapest I've found. It's cheaper than Costco. If you know of a place to get it cheaper in small quantities, and when I mean small quantities, 100 pounds at a time, four bags, let me know. I'm not gonna buy a pallet. Uh, but if somebody does buy a pallet, I could buy some sugar off of them. In my five gallon bucket, I don't mix it in here. I mix it in the big one, but I also created this spout. Um, this is a regular old five gallon paint spout from Lowe's and I just drilled a hole and siliconed it in here because when I need to fill up my little water pail, you know, without making a huge mess, this little bucket and leaving it cracked on the back makes it very easy for me to just kind of pour and not spill too much. You know, if you spill the sugar water this time of year, it really does create kind of a, a bee mess, meaning like the bees come from everywhere. So anyway, that spout works good for me. I use this little watering pail because it, and I got a little hose adapter on here to bend it a little bit more. It helps me more accurately fill jars and uh, internal feeders um, without making a big mess. Now, two other things. Honey be healthy. You can buy this or you can make it. Uh, the recipe is, is all over the internet. Uh, basically, it's one to one sugar syrup for a quart, and this is a half a gallon, so this is two quarts. But for one quart of sugar syrup, you use 15 drops of spearmint, 15 drops of lemongrass. You can get these anywhere, Amazon. And I add some neroli oil. Not many people know about this one. Uh, this is part of my swarm trap lure, neroli oil. It's basically lemongrass and neroli uh, that I mix up. I've got a few other tricks. I'll show you guys at another time how to do that. But just a few drops of this, maybe like seven. So 15, 15, and seven plus one quart. And that makes a very attractive one-to-one -one honeybee healthy substitute. The next thing I do is in order to keep my sugar syrup from going uh, fermenting or going foul, you can do two things. For a five gallon bucket mix, you can put about a tablespoon, maybe two teaspoons of plain old liquid bleach. The bees do not mind it. Uh, if you've ever got, had a, you know, your neighbor with a swimming pool and wonder why the bees go to the pool so easily, it's they're attracted by chlorine. They really don't mind a, a little bit of chlorine and the bleach does wonders. But instead of bleach, you can also use what's called a thymolized syrup. And this is made from, uh, Thymol, which comes in a crystal. It's very, very potent to the smell. Uh, you do kind of got to use gloves when you use it, but this also has some Nozema benefits and some other things, and it has the same exact benefit to keeping sugar water from spoiling. And the recipe for this is 60 grams of Thymol dissolved in 50 milliliters of alcohol, and then two teaspoons of soy lecithin, uh, totally mispronounced that, lecithin, it's an emulsifier dissolved in 250 milliliters of water. The, the lecithin helps the thymol stay in suspension. It's only for suspension, which is why it makes this milky substance and it kind of stays milky. Um, and once you make this um, kind of thymol mix, you know, you can use about two to two teaspoons, you know, to five gallons. It's kind of the recipe. This is on the internet also, but if you're just curious of other things you can add to your sugar syrup that will keep it from uh, fermenting and, and getting a little bit moldy. Bleach and or thymol. There's a word with this from a guy that invented this. I think it's called the manly dose. M-A-N-L-E-Y, something similar to that. I'm doing this off of memory. 
and there's like the standard manly dose and then there's like a two time three time four time five time dose based on the manly dose and like a 5x manly dose is used for treating you know severe nosema issues like a one or two manly dose is used for basically keeping your sugar water from fermenting google it you'll find some more information i'm just the one spreading the word well, that's how I do it. I don't think you need to see me uh, with a stick stirring uh, sugar granules in boiling water, but that's basically the next step. Once the water's boiling, I mix in the sugar, I put in my, uh, basically I put in about a half a cup of this Honey Bee Healthy. I've got it written here to remember, because it's basically one teaspoon of Honey Bee Healthy per quart is the dose. So about a half a cup for five gallons. And then I put about, you know, five to 10 milliliters of this syrup in there. And then I let it cool off. And then once it's cooled off, I put it back in my five gallon bucket and I'm good for a, another few days. Uh, that's my sugar syrup recipe. Let me know what you think below. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.